second part of our presentation, we see a different strategy of shipping lines, and that's vertical inter integration strategies. So uh, the index for uh, vertical integration strategies of shipping lines, but in general as well, we will provide a very quick background. Second, the significance of GTOs, which stands for Global Terminal Operators. We'll see the background of Global Terminal Operators and the different strategies of GTOs. So the question that we need to answer, what is a GTO? Are all shipping lines Global Terminal Operators? What is the background of a Global ter Terminal Operators? geographical specialization and factors in investment of uh, terminals. So the background first. Before talking about global terminal operators, we have to make a step back and talk a bit about ports. Why is that? Well, because ports, uh, which is a strategic infrastructure for any countries, really move from a public to a public-private ownership. So until the late 80s, most of ports worldwide were under a public ownership. And on the other side of the story, on the other side of the coin, shipping was mainly private. So we had a sort of clash. We had a sort of clash with shipping by being private, a very efficient industry. On the other side, we had ports which were in public hands rather run rather inefficiently then in the uh, before the 80s but during the 80s and the 90s we really experienced the um, booming of containerization so for the very first time we start seeing pretty much in every market the development of uh, container ships and container ships were requiring ports to be very fast and efficient Problem was that ports in public hands generally were rather slow and inefficient. So port turnaround uh, was extremely, extremely high. Therefore, we saw for the first time a change in governance that was needed. Many ports, many public ports recognized the fact that private participation was needed in order to promote competition. So again, more governments consider reforming port governance, and this reform is known as port devolution. So the option for port governance really where I'm a public port, what kind of governance should I pursue? Should I become a fully private port, remain public, or having a sort of mix public-private partnership? Well, as, um, as a matter of fact, most of countries decided to go for a mix of PPP, private-public partnership. That perhaps was the best way to retain some influence from a government perspective towards uh, a strategic infrastructure, but at the same time, letting private firms to create a more competitive environment. So what happened? Uh, was that the lease, um, the landlord port model was uh, the big winner of the story where ports land remained public but was leased, was rented to private operators. And here we come with our global terminal operators. Let's see the significance of global terminal operators. Over a short period of time, a few companies were able to become major global terminal operators control, controlling a multinational portfolio of terminals. So first of all, uh, just an idea about global terminal operators. What do they do? Global terminal operators are firms that are involved in operation, loading, discharging, storage in port terminals. They are the ones that lease terminals from a public body, usually port authority, controlled by probably a ministry or a municipality. 
And here you have a list uh, at, and, 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 uh, on the center uh, of the five major um, global terminal operators. You can see Hutchinson Port, Port of Singapore, Dubai Port Word, and APM Terminal. As you can see, um, these uh, four actually uh, terminal operators are mostly Asians. And what is interesting is that they come from different backgrounds. Uh, they're coming from a shipping background, from a stevedoring background, and from a financial background. In this case, you, we, can, we can guess that APM terminal is the terminal operator operated by Maersk, number one shipping company that we have seen in the first part of our presentation. So we remember Maersk was pursuing mainly a differentiation strategy. This is why Maersk is operating a, num a large number of terminals. Large, uh, operating a terminal involves controlling supply chains. It's not really a matter of cost, but it's rather, rather having co full control of a supply chain. Uh, so the rapid expansion of terminal operating company reflects two uh, economic forces. One, horizontal integration. So companies that are constrained by the limits of their own ports seek to apply their expertise in new market and seek new sources of income. This is the case of, for example, the port of Singapore. The port of Singapore has been pursuing an horizontal integration strategy. They are constrained within Singapore and they decided to expand overseas. How? By operating terminals in different countries and different markets. But we also have a different strategy, which is vertical integration. Vertical integration are companies that seek to expand their control over links in the transport chain. This is the case of Maersk. Maersk is not involved in port operation. Maersk is involved mainly in maritime transportation services, but they have entered into the port business through global terminal operations because of uh, control over supply chain. Ports are very important chains within uh, the supply chain. So we minimize disruption by controlling terminals. The significance of terminal operators. Uh, terminal operators seek profitability. For example, Hutchinson achieved a 35% uh, return on investment in the early 2000s. This is an example of how prof profitable uh, terminal operation can be. Uh, financial assets. Most of global terminal operators are actually listed on the stock markets. Uh, manager expertise. Uh, we need certainly know-how and expertise to replicate a business in several locations. Most of global terminal operators are global because they operate different terminals. Leverage to negotiate favorable condition with shipper by operating a terminal, you can uh, offer uh, discount and rebates. Global perspective as well. There is a comprehensive view of the state of the industry on price signals. Therefore, through um, global operation at terminals, you can achieve product diversification. The background of global terminal operators. Uh, interestingly, terminal uh, operating companies are grouped into three main categories. Number one, stevedores. Number two, shipping companies, and that's really the part that mostly uh, interests us. Third, financial holdings. So any of the global terminal operators that you analyze are coming either from stevedores, shipping companies, or financial holdings. Let's see a few examples. Stevedoring, port terminal operators that expanded into new markets, to replicate their exp expertise in terminal operation and to diversify the revenue geographically. One example, the Port of Singapore Authority is the largest global terminal operator coming from a stevedore background. 
So the Port of Singapore, uh, as we were saying before, pursued an horizontal strategy. They expanded overseas to diver diversify their profitability in, in, geographically. Therefore, if Singapore experienced a, an economic downturn, the profitability might remain uh, at a significant level because the Port of Singapore Authority is operating in Europe, is operating in, in, in the Free East Asia, is operating in the sub-Indian continent. Therefore, the profitability might not be affected. Uh, the Port of Busan actually for um, quite some years now has intended to expand overseas following the example of Singapore Authority. So the Port of Busan is also looking to become from a regional um, body expanding into um, global terminal operation. They've been looking particularly in Southeast Asia, uh, Myanmar, uh, Thailand and so on. Uh, they have not done yet any, any uh, move yet. The th second one, um, global terminal operators could come from a shipping company background. So maritime shipping company invest in port terminal facilities to help support their maritime shipping business. Therefore, once again, this is the concept of vertical integration from maritime transportation we enter into terminal operation to have full control of supply chains. Therefore, to truly offer door-to-door -door services, minimizing disruption at ports. Costco, the Chinese uh, shipping lines, number three in our table in the first part of the presentation, is today the largest global terminal operator coming from a maritime shipping background. Costco has moved very aggressively towards European terminals particularly. They are operating today in Spain, in the Netherlands, in Belgium, and they acquired even uh, the port of Piraeus, the port of Athens in Greece. And that's unprecedented. The third background of global terminal operators are financial holdings. Financial holdings include various financial interests ranging from investment banks, retirement funds, to sovereign wealth funds. The majority has an indirect management approach, therefore acquiring an asset stake and leaving the existing operation, uh, operator sorry, take care of the operations. One example, Dubai Ports Ward, DP Ward, is a branch of the Dubai Ward Sovereign Wealth Fund, is the largest global terminal operator coming from a financial background. Therefore, DP Ward, which is again uh, operating a large number uh, of terminals worldwide, is actually pretty much uh, the Dubai Sovereign Wealth Fund. Why do they enter into port business? They enter in port business because they think it's good business that can be profitable, that can be profitable over a long period of time. So here you have a table of the top uh, global terminal operator. This table is taken from uh, the review of maritime transport of the last year by uh, UNCTAD. And here you have a ranking. As you can see, number one, we have Costco headquartered in China. And that's the biggest, um, in absolute term, the biggest global op operator today uh, with 105 million TU handled. Number two is Hutchinson Ports from Hong Kong, far behind with 82 million TU. Then we have the Port of Singapore Authority, that's what we're talking about uh, in Singapore, uh, with 80 million TUs. Number four, we have Maersk, APM Terminals, uh, Netherlands with 78 million, so there is, that's our uh, first uh, second, actually, shipping line after Costco. Number five, we have DP Ward from the United Arab Emirates. Uh, number six, we have TIL from Switzerland. Uh, number seven, we have another Chinese terminal operator, China Merchant Ports. Number eight, interesting to us, we have CMACGM. That's um, number four uh, shipping lines worldwide. And number eight, terminal operator. They are particularly strong 
uh, with regard to market share in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa. And then number 11th, I skip number 9 and, and 10. We have number 11, NYK, Japanese shipping line. And number 12, we have Evergreen. Remember, Evergreen is a Taiwanese shipping line and they are 12th in terms of global terminal operation. So as you can see for shipping line, vertically integrating into terminal operation is a very important strategy to retain control of supply chains. Let's see the different strategies of GTOs. So very quickly, okay, we have categorized uh, GTOs into stevedoring, maritime shipping companies and financial corporation. So the business model for Stevador is horizontal integration. Uh, the position of terminal operation within the business, port operation is the core business, but they expand to look for diversification, geographical diversification. Um, dominant expansion strategy is actually through uh, direct investment. Example, the typical example I would say is the Port of Singapore Authority. Second one, let's see maritime shipping company in the center of the table. The business model is to integrate vertically. Maritime shipping is the main business. Terminal is a complementary function. Uh, the dominant strategy is direct investment through a parent company, as we've seen for Maersk, for example. Examples of uh, shipping lines that vertically integrate into terminal operations are APM, Maersk, Costco, Mediterranean Shipping Company, Hanjin used to be Evergreen. Financial Corporation. Here the business model is more a portfolio diversification. We can make money by uh, operating in different markets. Uh, so uh, the financial asset management is the main business. Uh, they are very much looking for profitability in the mid to long term. Dominant expansion strategy. This is usually done through merger and acquisitions. They acquire an external global terminal operator and they leave the management to an external company. Examples, here there is a few interesting examples. We were saying DP World, which is actually belonging to the sovereign wealth fund of the Arab Emirates, but we also have big banks which are involved in terminal operation. Deutsche Bank, the biggest German uh, bank. We have Morgan Stanley. Uh, we have Goldman, Goldman Sachs, uh, so big banks, um, big um, um, funds, uh, which are actually involved in terminal operations. And very interesting, and that's important for a strategic, strategic decision making of shipping line, to have a look at the share of geographical coverage of global terminal operators. So obviously, if we um, concentrate on shipping lines, uh, the more a shipping line is diversified geographically in terms of shipping network, the more we expect to see diversification in terms of terminal operation. For example, looking at CMACGM, the very first one on the top of the table, uh, you can see that uh, there is many different color bars uh, I can see they are very strong in the Mediterranean, represented by the green bar. They're very strong in the Euro European Atlantic by the brownish, light brown uh, bar. And they're strong in Africa and uh, South America. If you look, for example, Hanjin. Hanjin is not uh, anymore operating. Hanjin failed. But Hanjin, pretty much like HMM, Hyundai Merchant Marine, the Korean shipping line, I was telling you they follow a concentration uh, strategy. Therefore, uh, they're very much uh, concentrated in a specific shipping route, the Trans-Pacific, from the Far East to West Coast of America. So let's look at Hanjin. If I expect Hanjin to be strong in um, Far East and North America. So Hanjin, we see the, the violet bar is represented by North America and the yellow bar by Pacific Asia. In fact, Hanjin, you, Hanjin used to operate terminals in the city of Busan and in the city of Los Angeles. That makes sense for Hanjin. 
Um, APM Terminal, which again is the number one shipping line, is extremely diversified. If you see right here at uh, um, the fourth from the bottom, uh, APM Terminal is pretty much present everywhere. And looking at Port of Singapore Authority, they are concentrated in Asia Pacific, pretty much the yellow bar, and the Europe Atlantic. So the acquisition process of terminal. Global terminal operators are showing a more careful approach when it comes to entering into new markets. So the economic downturn after the financial crisis in 2008 and the COVID today has made global terminal operators much more careful on the consideration that need to be taken when entering in an external port. So uh, here at the bottom, I've listed five uh, elements which need to be uh, analyzed by GTOs when uh, entering in uh, international markets. First of all, the capacity situation of the port is something we might want to look at. What is the capacity? Uh, are we in line with what we are expecting or not? What is the potential market growth? Is uh, this port located uh, in a favorable position and is this port in a country where we can forecast um, double digit economic growth or poor economic growth. How about the fee structure? What is the fee structure from the port authority? What are the port dues? License and the permits. How, what is the level of bureaucracy in this specific port? Is it easy or is it difficult to operate? And finally, very important, obviously, we look at more infrastructural uh, features. How about the nautical and inland accessibility for our customer? To give an example, we go back to uh, a three years time period from April 2008 to April 2011. Okay, and this was the strategy of APM terminals, MERSC. And as you can see, uh, we are in the middle of uh, um, of actually the financial crisis, okay, started in 2008, but really stretched over for the next few years. Uh, if you if you see the the investment and the investment with the uh, gray uh, dot and the black dot, as you can see, Maersk has decided to enter in several regions: South America, North America, uh, West Africa. Middle East and Black Sea region. Yet, if you look at the black dot, the black circle, they also decided to exit from existing projects because they were expecting that the conditions, the market condition might have changed. A few example in North America and Caribbean, Northern Europe, uh, India, subcontinent, Pakistan, and in the Philippines. Very similar, DP Ward, okay, the, once again, the um, represented by the Dubai um, United Arab Wealth Fund. Uh, there is quite a few investments that were done in this three years period, particularly in Europe, in the Middle East, and in India, but they also exited heavily from projects of terminals in Australia and in the Middle East. So the conclusion for this second part about vertical integration. The largest terminal operators have a strong globally oriented portfolio, each with a specific geographical orientation. And particularly we have seen that the geographical orientation very much for shipping line follow their shipping network. If we have a shipping line that is very diversified geographically like Maersk, we expect this company to be operating terminals in every other market. On the other hand, if we have companies like the Korean ones, HMM or Hanjin a few years ago, which were extremely uh, concentrated on a few markets, I expect the terminals also to be very concentrated. Uh, so vertical and horizontal integration in the terminal industry have contributed to the global expansion of port operators. Maritime shipping company went into the terminal operation business to help secure maritime traffic and particularly, I think that's the main point, to retain control 
of port operations along the supply chain. Finally, Stevador company expanded their operation to diversify and replicate their business model. So we have seen three different models of global terminal operators. I believe the most uh, significant from our perspective are shipping lines that vertically integrate. That's the end of part two. Thank you very much.